They are colors that come from your eye as opposed to coming right out of a tube. Hey everyone, I'm Marianne Mitchell. Welcome to Whole Artist Mastery, where you discover your true artistic expression and learn how that informs your particular use of visual language. And then knowing how you show up in the world as an artist. So today we're going to revisit color. Again, there's so many different ways to look at color, to learn about color, to know color, and most importantly, what kind of colors do you feel most connected to and how do they show up in your work in a consistent way? Whether you're doing abstract, semi-abstract, representational, all of the above, it's your color palette that often is the deciding factor or the thread that ties all your different ranges of style within your voice together. So this is kind of building off of an, um, an older video called the Essential 11 Colors. So I have essentially 11 colors that you need to make all the colors in the world, <laughs> according to my experience. And, um, and also to understand the relationship between your connection to your voice and how that informs your particular use of color in this particular instance. So I'm going to show you a few favorite colors that many people rely on, such as French Ultramarine and Naples Yellow and Indian Yellow and Aqua for those who love to paint, you know, water scenes and a few other colors. So you can make them especially to your way of seeing that color as opposed to having it come right out of the tube. So I look forward to showing you what I'm talking about. Okay, first up is Aqua. It's a gorgeous color that so many people really enjoy using in their work. And I think it's a difficult color to actually find and buy. So you start with white because it's a very light color. When you're working with light colors or you're making white colors, light colors, you always start with white. Now this is cobalt teal. So I'm going to add, oh, you know, I guess like a third of the amount of cobalt teal to the white. Um, it's important to approximate ratios as opposed to get really hung up on exact ratios. So now what I'm going to do is show you what this is like without any yellow in it. It's a beautiful color in and of itself, but if you add a tiny bit of Hansa yellow light, which is a cool yellow, and I have a whole video on the relationship between warm and cool colors. So when you mix warm and warm together, you get a clearer, richer color. If you mix cool and cool together, you get a clearer, richer color. If you mix warm and cool together, you get a more muted or muddy color. So this is a cool yellow mixed with a cool blue. And just ever so slightly, a scant amount of Hansi yellow so that it doesn't turn green, but it warms the aqua, the color up a little bit. So you see the difference here? This, as I said, is a beautiful color in and of itself, but there's more color light in this because it's made with more than just one color. So again, the recipe for this color aqua is starting with white, then cobalt teal, and a scant a little tiny bit of Hansa yellow light. So I'm gonna put this aside. Next up is French ultramarine blue, which is a gorgeous color as well. And many people love French ultramarine blue. And I was giving a the um, understanding your visual 
language and also practical application of color for painters. That's the one. And someone asked me in the live online class, which by the way is a recorded class on the website, Whole Artist Mastery website at this point. Somebody said, well, why don't you have French ultramarine? And I said, well, you can make French ultramarine. And she said, wow, how do you do that? So that's what I'm gonna show you right now. You start with cobalt blue and you bring in some quinacridone red. One of the things this doing all of this teaches you is which pigments are more intense and which are weaker now and, and where they sort of are equal. Quinacridone red, even though it's a transparent color, is very strong. So you can, I'm gonna start out with just a little bit. You can always add more. Now, one of the reasons, I'm gonna add just a little bit more, that's pretty close. And I don't have any French ultramarine anymore because I stopped using it. And the reason I stopped using it is because it's inherently a very shiny pigment. And when it dries and it's mixed with other blues, it still has this shiny quality about it. So you can see it sort of separates from other colors around it. This way, and that's pretty close to French ultramarine, you can, on the other wonderful thing about mixing your own colors is you can make it a little redder if you want. Make it just slightly more purple. You have control over what the color looks like. And this cobalt is a dense pigment. And since it's mostly cobalt here with just a little bit of quinacridone red, it's going to um, dry along with all the other colors very nicely. So there we go. That is a version, my version, and can be your version of French ultramarine blue. All right, so we'll put that over here. Make way for the next color, which I'm going to make Indian yellow. I used to use Indian yellow all the time. It was a staple in my paint box. And until I was working on this one painting and I had the, um, I really wanted a crescendo of bright yellow and I kept putting more and more, like dark Indian yellow, sort of an orangey yellow. And I kept putting more and more Indian yellow down and take note of this because Indian yellow is a very transparent color. And as the finish color on a piece, photographing it was always turning up more dull than it was in real life. Now, since we all live in a world where images are most likely the first introduction that anyone's gonna to have to your work, you want it to be as true to the original as possible. So I replaced the real Indian yellow with one that I made. And the recipe for that is our two cadmium colors, which are much, much denser pigments and therefore much more um, potent as a color in the photographic form. So here we go. We're going to actually, we're going to start with, because you start with a lighter color and add the darker color. So start with cad, cadmium yellow medium and add a little cad orange here. So again, you want more cad yellow than orange don't want to turn this into orange. I just want to make it a really warm, luscious, guess what? Indian yellow. There it is. And as I said, it's a much denser co um, composition of pigment and, um, and the density of the paint. So it will show up in your painting much more effectively. And if I wanted to, I can take half of it away and make some of it just even a little more orangey. So you can have a variety or a little bit of undulation in your yellows without being tied or influenced to the color that just comes out of the tube. Okay, we're gonna put that aside Next up is, well, I would say my version of Payne's Gray. 
<laughs> um, I know many people love the charcoal gray blue color of Payne's gray, but here's um, a color that's close to that, but just so rich and gorgeous. And it is made with Viridian. Get this out of here, Viridian. And Alizarin Crimson, which is very different than Quinacridone Red. It's a more purple red. And so I think it's a little bit more dominant than the Viridian. So let's mix these together. So there was definitely more Viridian in this than Alizarin Crimson. And it's sort of a green Payne's Gray. If I had any more Viridian, it's gonna turn it purple. You can sort of see the purple showing up. But that's like a green charcoal. Now, if you want to make it a little bluer, pull out your cobalt blue and add just a little bit of that to the mix here. And that's the Payne's Gray. Or in the family of Payne's Gray. So if you're really, if you're very much a person who has to have the exact color that comes out of the tube, then buying your colors in the tube form is what you need to do. If you like to mix your colors to be a little more varied within your work, and I'm going to add just a little bit of white here to show you how to lighten it just a little bit. And you can see getting a little bit lighter. Okay, so there we go with Payne's Gray. And the next one I want to show you is Naples Yellow because that is a staple for traditional color palettes and it's so simple to make. And you can push it one way or the other. So you're going to start with white because it's a light color and you're going to add Cad yellow because it's you're going to it's actually kind of a muddy color so we're going to use a warm yellow and about like that see how much white I have about like that and then what's the opposite of yellow purple so when two colors two primary colors are put together. When red and blue are put together, the leftover color is yellow, which means it's the opposite color. So I'm gonna put ever so tiny bit. Of, this is very strong purple. And just a little bit more in. I wanna turn it purple. And if I wanted to, I can make it just a little bit lighter. So I'll take half of it away, add some more white to it. And to me, you got your Naples yellow, either one, right there. One more earth tone, one earth tone because burnt sienna is also a staple in many people's palette, and it's such an easy color to mix. So here we go. You start with orange, cat orange, and you add purple. Look at that. Now, you can make it more yellow by adding Add yellow to it, make it push it more towards the raw umber ochre family. Or you can add alizarin crimson to it to make it even redder. Like that. So simple. And they're colors that come from your eye as opposed to 
coming right out of a tube. Next up is black. So here is the recipe for black and it is equal parts Prussian blue, dioxazine purple, which is the same purple I used in the Naples yellow, and cad orange. So they're about equal proportions. So I'm gonna mix them all together. And every single time I make black, it's slightly different. And we'll see how this turns out this time. There's a little bit of something in there. And the way you can tell, see now in, a, in its concentrated form, that looks pretty black. So I'm gonna pull it out. And as I pull it out, it looks a little more purple. So I'm gonna take half of it aside and mix what's opposite purple? Yellow, remember that? So I'm gonna add just a little bit of yellow to gray it down, to, to gray down the purple to make it more of a neutral color. And there you go. See, that looks pretty black. Now, the reason to make black is that this color has more luminosity, has more color light in it than actual black. And the last color I'm gonna show you is a version of cerulean blue, which is also another beautiful color. And it's quite expensive to buy. So um, one of the things about making your colors out of these essential 11 is that you're saving a lot of money. I, I've showed you, through, I'm gonna be showing you at all total eight colors. And um, that's a lot of a lot of other colors to buy when um, you can make them from these essential eleven. So we're going to start with uh, manganese blue hue, add white, and just a touch of cobalt like that. Always make sure you have a clean palette knife. And the two blues together, and I think I might need a little bit more cobalt. So let's put a little bit more cobalt in. And the reason I cut, cut it in half is that I don't get exactly what I want with one half. I can pull from the other half and I would say I'm gonna do that. And that to me looks like a pretty pretty true cerulean. Maybe it's a little light. I might have used a little too much white, but the color itself looks a lot like cerulean, which is three times the cost of manganese blue. So I've just made eight colors for you out of the essential 11 colors. And by doing so, I'm showing you how to economize on the amount of tubes of paint that you need to buy and how to maximize the range of color that you can make to have the colors be from your way of seeing color as opposed to a color that's just out of a tube. So to recap, I made aqua, French ultramarine blue, Indian yellow, I have to remember what I made here, <laughs> and Payne's gray, Naples yellow, burnt sienna, cerulean, and black. So go have fun making color. Thanks so much for watching. I invite you to put your comments down below. I'd love to hear what you think about these colors and how you're doing with your own mixing. And um, I look forward to hearing from you. See you next time.